everybody. Welcome to another Heretic Hump Day. I am your host, Gary Schumacher, and I've got something a little bit interesting for you guys today. I have discovered this channel, um, three ladies here. Their names are Donna Virtue, Jen Nizza, and Jack Marino Chen. Um, her name is Jack. Okay. <laughs> J-A-C. Chen. They host uh, a a YouTube channel called New Age to New Hearts. Now, here's the background on these three, okay? One was a professional psychic. Another was a New Age teacher. And the third was an occultist, a former occultist. And, uh, you know, why, it says on their on their channel, why did a professional psychic, a new age teacher, and an occultist practicing ritual magic renounce it all for Christ? And uh, so I watched some of their content, and these women are are for real. They've uh, they've done a complete one eighty, and uh, they are out here, and they are all about all about our Lord. And it's good to see that there is hope, that there is people turning it around. And uh, so I am going to uh, play some clips from these ladies because I love to see people turn it around like this. And then try, and because they've learned from experience uh, something similar to like uh, Alabama Drew and myself. I've done because we we followed false prophets. Well, these ladies were down with some with some stuff here, and they've turned it around, and they are following sound doctrine, and uh, they seem to uh, to uh, have a very good channel here, and they're and they're bringing out really solid content. So let me play you a clip of this. Hi, I'm Doreen Virtue, and I'm an ex New Age teacher. Hi, I'm Jen Misa, and I'm an ex psychic. Hi, I'm Jack Marino Chen, and I'm an ex-occultist. And, and this is New Age to New Heart. In the New Age, we had a strong belief in the idea that we had many lives, past lives even, and that they were something that we could tap into. And that was almost this gateway for us to then get into more New Age beliefs, New Age practices. And we're just going to bust this topic open and talk about it today and discuss the lies that we used to believe, how it impacted our life, and what the Bible says about these things. So, ladies, let's just jump into this. Yeah, I mean, I, I would like to start with past life regression, mm. automatic writings. I don't know if you guys yes. did anything like that. I oh. actually offered that as a service. I started teaching my own divination group, and I would do different topics that I would teach on. It was a weekly class or whatever you want to call group and i would actually uh offer that as a service and uh teach people how to do it starting with meditation and then going into it so automatic writing of course is channeling and i would do it on a piece of paper mm -hmm. and whoever wanted this done would pay me whatever it cost i think like 15 20 bucks and i would sit there and channel put their name on the top of the paper and just ask about their past lives and let me tell you something of course demons are responsible for all information given through a reading of course it's not uh godly at all and there's going to be something in there that resonates with you and i know uh, doreen and i actually made a video about dolores cannon who was all about past lives and i did this little clip which it's i'm not trying to be snarky but it's kind of like hey and you know 1504 you were a dancer and you fell out a window and you broke your ankle you love to dance but you couldn't do it anymore and let's say that was your past life, right? You're resonating with that. Oh my gosh, I've always had, you know, this ankle injury, but I just love to dance and I can't do it. There's going to be something that resonates because demons have been watching you, studying you. So they're going to provide some sort of accurate-ish information in that. And the idea was so appealing that you can have more than one chance, that you can have more than one life. It's such an attractive doctrine of demons so yeah that is very very interesting she talks about automatic writing so who else do we know that does automatic writing that myself alabama and drew have all covered her yes 
Miss All Caps herself, Amanda Grace. So, yeah, she is, um, she goes into these, she goes into these trances and she um, gets these messages supposedly from God, unless she's up on a stage and then it just <clears throat> zaps into her. But uh, yeah, um, automatic writing is an occultist practice and she would charge big money for that, just like Amanda Grace does today. Um, so, and here is a woman out here that's come out of this and is actually basically telling the tale, telling the tale and Amanda Grace and all these other all caps fakers out here. Doesn't everybody kind of want to take see backsy hmm. in a way? Yeah, it's not, yeah. Like that movie Groundhog Day where you get another yeah, chance it's... over and over mm -hmm. again and and this is another case of the New Age appropriating from another culture. Yeah. And she's right. The New Age is appropriating from another culture with this reincarnation. Nowhere in the Bible does it ever say anything about reincarnation. It, it's a, it says you get one life and then you die and then judgment. But that is what's going on in Christianity these days. These false teachers, these false prophets, they're bringing in this new age doctrine, this doctrine of demons. This is Hinduism. This is a belief that you have multiple chances. And I have to say that it was popularized very recently by um, Neil Donald Walsh, who wrote the heretical series, Conversations with God. And in that book, one of the books, so his his imagination or a demon pretending to be God or a combination told Neil that he was on his 700th and some odd life. And so, and, and I did it too. Um, here I go again, apologizing. I had a deck of cards called past life something. And, and I was a certified hypnotherapist. So I had a, I taught a class just like you did, Jan. On, uh, and I'm glad she said that too, because I always thought hypnotism was a very dangerous thing. Um, a lot of people use it to quit smoking and things like that, but it's not something you want to deal with. You have someone, maybe someone who's got no, no, is nefarious and you're going to let them mess with your mind. Um, how, how to do past life regression. And a lot of it did come from Dolores Cannon, uh, reading her books. And then she was a friend of mine. So she did a couple of past life regressions on me and, and they were mind blowing. I just, I don't want to sugarcoat this because people are going to come at us and say, well, my child remembers his past mm. life and we went to his graveyard and it was accurate. And that's how it was with my past life regression with Dolores Cannon that uh, she took me back to the time of Babylon where I was a, a male um, at, uh, astrologist priest and, and, and all these things, these symbols and everything that I didn't know beforehand. I, did, I didn't know anything about Babylon back then. And I was able to corroborate it after the past life regression. And then yeah. another woman, when I was flying so much on airplanes for my, um, my workshops, I was having a kind of anxiety issues. So I went to a, a hypnotherapist and she ended up past life regressing me back to another life. Again, historical data in that past life that I didn't know that I was able to corroborate. So, Jen, this reminds me of when we would do readings and there would be this mixture of incredible accuracy mm -hmm. mixed with lies. And that's what the past life regressions are. These are demons who know enough about human history to sprinkle it in and then point people away from Jesus as the only Savior. Yes, and that's, that's exactly what I've been saying for a while now, that that's what these false prophets a lot of times do they come up with these false doctrines and they sprinkle in just enough scripture to make it sound legitimate and it's it's never ever legitimate it's lies with sprinkles on top and they are they're working for demons they are spreading doctrines of demons all these women were as well um i hope that they've repented for the things that they've done because think about this for a second. Okay, they've turned away from all this, but how many people did they lead down a dark path that they that they never turned back? You know, 
that's something that they have to live with the rest of their lives. Um, but I hope, I hope they've repented. One life. <laughs> we have uh, in Hebrews, Hebrews 9, 27. And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and then after that comes judgment. So this, this idea of you get many chances, why would we need to walk the narrow path then? She's absolutely right. I totally agree with what she just said. If we have all these past lives, then why do we have to ha walk the narrow path? If we keep getting do over after do over after do over until we get it right. No, we get one life, one life to live. And uh, we have to make the best of it. So much of it is this beautiful fantasy. Like, we're thinking about these past lives that we allegedly had and what does that mean for me and even how astral projection and these psychedelic experiences kind of feed into that idea that oh this isn't the first time i've been here deja vu i've seen this okay. before but it's not actually really thinking about the implications of reincarnation it's just this fun exciting fanciful oh this is so exciting to learn this about myself let me go self-discover and that's another thing that the false prophets do as well they sell a fantasy and um and it's not just obviously the false prophets there are a lot of uh pitfalls out here you have people like these ladies and what they used to do for a living how many times have you driven by a uh, psychic uh, reading place with a big eyeball outside the window and neon and come in and get your tarot cards read and things like that this is all new age demonic you know it seems it's harmless it's all for fun no it's not people it's not for fun god isn't speaking through these people demons are and the devil is very devious based on what does this mean for me this is exciting and not really looking at things honestly and thinking okay if reincarnation is real and the idea of karma is real if we really look at what reincarnation is it's i mean at best it's morbid and it's uh, weighty and it's works based and it's not actually mm -hmm. this fun, beautiful, glamorous thing that culture, especially the new age, makes it out to be. It's it's something much more sinister. Would you agree? One hundred percent, Jack. And I agree. One hundred percent, Jack. <laughs> so yeah, they're a very interesting group. They uh, these ladies certainly are, and they have a very interesting channel. They um, have. I have not watched a lot of their content, to be perfectly honest with you. I just found that this one on reincarnation, I found that this was a very interesting topic because so many Christians out there actually believe in reincarnation. You'd be surprised how many people do. And it has nothing to do, nowhere in the Bible does it have anything to do with our religious beliefs. It's not in there. You get one life, and that is it. And uh, the, it's a Buddhist philosophy. That's the right word I'm looking for. But nowhere do you find it in Christianity. And that what seems to be happening. You know, these there's an influx of New Age and Buddhism and different cultures infiltrating Christianity. And people who claim to have an open mind they want to welcome this type of doctrine in but it's not in the bible people i mean uh, there's a lot of things the different variations uh of, of the different sects in christianity are are bringing in they're not sound doctrine i can go on and on it's um reincarnation is just the tip of the iceberg there's so much other occultist things that are that are coming into uh, Christianity, it's, it's, it's scary. Yes, I think that this has to be brought to people's attention. Now, these women here, they finally got themselves out of it and they've seen the error of their ways. I, and I hope they keep on that narrow path. 
like the one woman said, I believe it was Doreen said that if there is so many do-overs in life, if any reincarnation, if you make a mistake and you didn't do it right in this life, well, don't worry, you got 700 more to go. Then why do we need to stay on the narrow path? We're not, people who believe in this type of thing are not, getting into their Bible. They're not listening to the word of God. They're not listening to the word of Jesus Christ. People, if you call yourself a Christian, that means that you believe in the gospel. You believe in the word of Jesus Christ. You don't just go off on your own path and decide this is how it's going to be. That's how it's going to be. I don't like what the Bible says, so I'm going to do things this way. We're going to bring in a new uh, apostolic reformation. No, that's not how it works. God is not done with the old apostolic reformation, okay? And that's what's going on. you got to read the book of Revelations. All of these things are coming to pass they're corrupting scripture. They're corrupting the gospel. And we have to be careful every day. We need to put on the full armor of God and we have to do battle with this nonsense. You know, you could just say, okay, it's harmless fun. You go get your palm read or something. No, it's not harmless fun. This is an occultist practice and they've sugarcoated it and we need to knock it off. We need to bring this, as much as the false prophets, we need to bring this to the forefront. We can't go just wandering around saying, okay, well, I'm going to take a little Buddhism and I'm going to take a little Jewish and I'm going to take a little Christianity. I'm going to take a little of this, take a little of that, and I'm going to start my own thing, okay? This is what I'm going to believe, you know? That's not how it works. Either you're a Christian or you're not. And I am a Christian, and I believe every word that is in this book. Re you know, I don't go off course with this. Stay on course. This is the map to salvation, people. This is our lives. This is our souls. This is our God. He left us this book so we would know what to do. It's, it's a book for life. He left us a book. Read it. Read the Bible, folks. It'll open your eyes. And no one will ever be able to fool you ever, ever again. So next up here, we have the infamous blue tap. Um, I tried to give this woman the benefit of the doubt, uh, but she's completely gone off the deep end. Uh, she's prophesying she's uh in this short clip here i'm gonna play for you is uh talking about how well i'll play it for you because she is uh she's really gone out the deep end two things that we learn from the bible number one all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god you me everyone all of us have fallen short we cannot we do not measure up to the perfection of god number two and you know this one for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life this truth about our sinfulness and god's judgment is only the first half of the story you've got to finish the story the second half of the story is like that final chapter of every single romance novel after it seems like there's no hope finally the two lovers get together and live happily ever after so yeah the bible's kind of like a romance novel god loved you so much that he figured out a way to overcome all the problems of the first half of the story so that the two of you can live happily ever after it's pretty cool don't stop after the first half of the story there is so much more seek him seek jesus so the ending of that was a bit cringe. I mean, to compare our love of God to a cheap romance novel, I mean, come on, Blue. Are, are you really kidding me about this? I mean, really. I, I don't know what else I could possibly say about that it, other than it was pretty cringy. Our love of God runs deeper than any trashy romance novel. <laughs> You know, and anybody that's been married, I've been married to the same woman 
for the past 33 years and uh, nothing that ever became, was in one of these rashy romance novels ever came through our marriage. Our marriage had good times. Our marriage had bad times. We promised to uh, love each other in sickness and in health and forsake all others. And that is a marriage. That is a love, a bond that you have. Not something you're going to read in a trashy romance novel. And that, in a way, is the same thing that we're doing with God here. It's a bond. It's something you have to carry your entire life. You have to just break down and realize that you're not as good as God. You're just a sinner. Okay. And if it wasn't for the grace, God's grace, we'd all wind up in, uh, in a very bad place. So I just was a little bit deterred about that. Uh, and it's very concerning that she would do something like that. So, yeah, I think this is some kind of mental illness. I, it, it's, I like to call it Fabio Jesus because, uh, yeah, that's what happens when you start comparing romance novels to the son of God. Okay. And she is not the only one that's been doing it. There's been quite a few of them false prophet ladies out there have been doing the same thing. And uh, I just want to also speak about uh, Blue Tap quickly here. I don't want to spend too much time on her because she is starting to get a little bit, go off the rails here. She's starting to uh, to um, do the uh, prophecy, like the false prophets I've been calling out. And uh, I really am concerned about her. And uh, she, we need to keep her in our prayers because uh, she is uh, she's in need of our help. Anybody that thinks uh, that they're running around and uh, you know getting these visions and dreams like she is, and another thing is is that she's just like they are. She's keeping it vague and generalized and stuff. And I know Alabama had her on his show a couple of times, but. Um, I'm sorry, I just uh, I just can't get with this anymore. I've already called her out once before for talking out both sides of her mouth, and uh, I'm going to continue to do that. Um, some people may think she's uh, a woman of God. I'm, I don't think so. I think she's using this platform to push her books and whatever else she's doing out there. So, and uh, she's kind of taken up with one of my enemies too. So that's not helping at all. So, so um. I, I also want to just um, getting off that subject is I just want to show this here today. I just got this postcard in the mail. It says here because every there are, not everybody out here hates me, <laughs> okay? Which I'm glad. So I got a postcard. It says Gary, thank you so much for your dedication of your YouTube ministry. I pray for you every day, Scott Christie. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I am not. I have a question for you, Scott, if you're watching. I'm not sure if that is from Scott and Christy or is it Scott Christy? <laughs> so, you know, please leave a comment in my uh, in my uh, comment section. Let me know uh, who that is. Am I getting a, a, a postcard from two people or one? Because so, the way you put Scott Christy one on top of the other, not side by side. I'm thinking it's it's you and uh, Scott and Christy. So, but anyway, thank you. The both of you or thank one of you, <laughs> I really do appreciate it because that type of thing right there, that makes my day. You know, I, I do get down uh, doing this sometimes. I, uh, I think sometimes what I'm doing isn't really appreciated and, and it's, not, uh, it's not getting through to certain people. And then I get something like this, you know, and it's somebody who actually took the time to you know, get a postcard and ad address it to my PO box and send it to me it was very nice. And this is the card right here. And I want to read the back of it. It says, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has pronounced to those who love him. James chapter one, verse 12. So. I do. I really appreciate that, Scott, or Scott and Christy. <laughs> so, and I really do. And I appreciate all the well wishes I get. Um, S Scott is not the only one who's uh, written me and 
please, please, if you, if you want to um, write to me, I would love it. If you want to email me, you can do that too. My email is, uh, let's see, I always mess this up, is right here. <laughs> I am gschumacher429 at gmail.com. And also, um, my, uh, you can write to me at my post office box uh, at uh, Gary Schumacher, P.O. Box 181, Howell, New Jersey, 07731. And uh, I, I, will, uh, I will greatly appreciate that. And, uh, and I will uh, mention you on my broadcast here. And also, I'd like to say if anyone out there has a uh, testimony they would like to for me to either read on my uh, YouTube channel here, or if you'd like, uh, if you have a web camera and a computer or a cell phone, even I can put you right here on StreamYard, and you can uh, come on my program, and I'll interview you, and you can give your testimony right here on uh, on my uh, Heretic Hump Day or Saturday Night Live stream. Um, sometimes I do Heretic Hump Day live. <clears throat> I am here to help. I am here to serve God and I am here to help. I am not here to be anyone's enemy, even though I have uh, made a few. Um, so I just like to like read some scripture speaking of enemies I've made. Um, this is um, from Thessalonians chapter three, verses two and three. Uh, it says here, pray to that we will be rescued from the wicked and evil people. And you know who you are. <laughs> For not everyone is a believer, but the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guide you from the evil one. And we know who the evil one is, Satan. And Satan is out there every single day. He's trying to trip us up. He's throwing things in our path. And um, <clears throat> what we do is we have to stay steadfast in our belief of Jesus Christ. And pray to him every day because we love him and we need to show him how much we love him every day. Pray every day, pray hard because these days are getting tougher all the time. And before you know it, he'll be back. And I can't wait for that day. I don't know if he'll be raising me from the grave or raising me out of my shoes, but he will be back. And we pray for that day. We pray to you, Jesus, for that day. Because I've always said that I woke, I went to sleep one night and it seemed like I woke up in a bizarre world and that's the world we're living in. If you'd have told me 20 years ago that I'd be, we'd be living in a world like this, I would have told you you're crazy. But we're living in a world like this. And it's getting a bit worse every day. So pray, pray hard. Praying is powerful. So let's do that right now. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing us with another day. And thank you, Lord, for bringing these people out here to fellowship with me. And thank you for everyone who has written me, emailed me, and just given me hope when I was down. And thank you, Lord, for walking this walk with me, this walk of life, holding my hand and sometimes carrying me when I have fallen down. Thank you for blessing me with this beautiful, beautiful family that I never thought I'd have, but you blessed me with anyway. Thank you so much, Lord. And with that, I pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, folks, that is going to do it for me. This was a very tough heretic hump day uh, because I have some computer issues here. Um, so I'm looking into buying a new computer. So I'm, I, I got to get one without crystals in it because these crystals are messing up my, uh, my computer here. Uh, I got to get a crystalless computer <laughs> uh, because uh, somebody tells me that, uh, you know, crystals are the reasons for, for the, my, my uh, computer problems. But uh, I'm, ram I'm, I'm rambling right at this point. <laughs> anyway, God bless you all. And I will see you Saturday night for my Saturday night live stream. So you take care. Bye bye now.
me out, check me out, everybody, it's Gary for God, I'm Gary for God, coming to you from New Jersey, I got something I want to share with you, something very, very important I need to share with you and my community. Oh, it's not I'm not able to bring you a currency. Sorry, folks, due to some technical difficulties, I'm happy. I'm not able to bring you a heretic update tonight. Having some problems with my computer. I got most of it done, and it's doing pretty good when I got company. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I gotta tell you that my computer runs off of crystals and frequencies. I didn't know that my computer was running off of crystals and frequencies, and now I'm having a lot of problem with it. A lot of problems with my computer. I had a really good video I was gonna make, and I think I know someone else who's running off of crystals. 